Hi, folks. How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me okay? Are, 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 uh, we're a little too loud. Are we okay? Oh, I better mute this stream, huh? There we go. Sorry about that, guys. You're going to get a little bit of double talk, but we'll be okay after that. And there are two of us. There are, in fact, two of us here. Those of us in the audience who can count will see <laughs> that I've got a guest with me today. Uh, this is Tim Gerritsen, the head of the studio for Fantasy Flight Interactive. Tim, say hi. Give a wave to the uh, adoring public, if you will. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> How's it going, folks? Today we're going to be showing uh, we're going to be showing some more of the game. Um, I've actually got a pretty special uh, treat for you today live here, but um, we're also going to be talking to Tim a little bit about some of the design decisions we've made. Um, we'll be able to show you some new stuff for the game, um, and we will also I'm going to turn up Tim's game a little bit here. We're also going to do a short Q and A session once we're done, um, and then after that. You know, we can uh, take some more, and uh, then we'll be uh, we'll be off for the day, and then we'll see you next Tuesday at one o'clock. I also wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about streaming schedules before we get started here. Um, we've been thinking about moving from a uh, from a two days a week at one p.m. to uh, Tuesdays at one, and then Thursdays at four. Uh, we think that just might be a little bit easier for some people to swing. Um, you know, <laughs> a couple of people missed the uh, first stream, and we're a little upset about that, but. Uh, Hopefully that schedule might be a little bit more, um, a little bit more doable for some people who are working uh, full jobs here. So uh, just let me know if that's something you're interested in. You can either let us know in the chat here. You can tweet at us FFI underscore games, or you can let us know on Facebook or even the Steam page, um, and we'll uh, we'll take those votes into account and decide what we're going to do for that new schedule. But moving forward, we'll probably end up doing that. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's show them the game, Luke. Yeah, it's about time, right? <laughs> that's enough of that image, right, guys? Uh, so here we are in the main menu, for those of us who haven't seen this yet. Um, but we have talked a little bit about this. We showed a little bit on, uh, on the announcement as well. Uh, for those who are just joining in, um, we are talking about moving to a 1 o'clock on Tuesdays and then 4 o'clock on Thursdays. Um, we're, still we're still trying to decide if that's going to be how we move forward. So today, um, yesterday we showed you a little bit of Quest 1, um, and we had to stop after three locations. But I think what we're going to do today, Tim, is we're going to show them quest two and we're going to get all the way to the boss and see if we can take it down what do you think about that if you can <laughs> let's see uh yeah we were running it a little bit before here and uh, having a little bit of trouble with some of it um not everybody made it not everybody who we brought made it to the end um but we are going to see if we can do it this time all right, so, well, before we dive in, though, let's just say this is Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, who might be just joining us, this is Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. Um, what's going to be happening here is uh, we're going to be showing you the game for the second time here on, yeah. on a live stream. Um, this is all a work in progress, so none of this is final. Um, things are still, we're, we're in, what would you call this? Would you call this early alpha? I would say this is, yeah, we're in the alpha period right now, mm -hmm. uh, building towards early access. I apparently could be louder. I will try to enunciate a little <laughs> better for everybody hopefully this is better uh but yeah we we are building towards the early access release early next year so this is a uh, alpha okay well that sounds good to me so let's uh let's jump in and see what we can do here and we're going to jump into the second quest which is called Flies and Spiders, and the, uh, the concept of this is that after we make it through Mirkwood, we are going to be uh, going into deeper into the forest, and uh, our friends have been captured by giant spiders, so we need to rescue them. Um, this is kind of one of the more unique quests that you're going to be seeing within Lord of the Rings, because uh, a lot of the times the objectives are about progressing through locations. This one's going to have an effect on the board, and this kind of explains some of the, uh, some of the interesting design space that we're playing around with in terms of what objectives can do. Mm -hmm. So let's jump in. Uh, we've got the starter deck prepared here, so everything that you're going to be seeing here, everything that you see here is going to be cards that you'll get after you complete the tutorial, so these are going to be available to everyone within the core set. So before we dive in, though, let's uh, let's explain what, what you're looking at here. Do you want to take a look at the map? Yeah, well, let's, let's take a look at the map. Why don't you go ahead and kill the background for a second, and uh, we'll give you a little more peek at what's going on. Yeah, let's do it. So we'll jump back in, and we'll show you the map. So this is the uh, map of Middle Earth. You'll you'll see the campaigns, the individual campaigns that will be available in the game will be placed at various places around Middle Earth. 
Uh, don't worry, that, that one in Mordor is just a test campaign that we're working on internally. It's not actually a campaign <laughs> currently set up. But, uh, but uh, this, you'll come into this map when you, when you hit play and pick which of the campaigns you wish to dive into. So from here, let's go ahead and uh, dive right into Adventures in Wilderland. Am I coming through okay? It sounds like I'm... Yeah, it sounds like you're not getting... sounds like I'm not mic'd or something. Something's, something's going wrong going here. going on here. Is your... How's that? Test? One, two, three, test. Hmm. I can hear, I can hear it now. Yeah, I'm hearing pick up on the second mic here. Yeah, all right. Okay, uh, so now we're at the Adventures in Wilderland which is a full campaign. So you're looking at a campaign. On the right, you see there are five individual quests. Each quest is made up of between three and six individual locations, depending on the quest. And uh, we're going to dive into Flies and Spiders, which is the second quest in the Adventures in Wilderland campaign. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, people are saying you should go hard, but I think it's normal. <laughs> I That's think for now we're going to show you guys normal. We'll be able to show you hard in, uh, in a little bit here, but I want to talk about those changes in a little bit better detail before yeah. we do that. Okay. Man, I don't know if I could handle hard at this point. <laughs> Not after that trauma of that first run today. All right, so we're going we're gonna to dive into the first location of the, f of the second quest. We've got this wonderful sound of voiceover from Gladriel. Hmm. Sounds like there's some weirdness going on with the volume. Yeah, it sounds like it. Hang on, guys. We're going to work on the volume here and make sure this is all working okay. Hmm. See, in test, everything works great. Of course. When you go live. Once you go live. We're hearing it fine trying to figure out what that could be because we've got the levels turned up here how about now any better no they're still not getting levels here hmm. how about now folks there you go i'm gonna wait for chat to catch up and see if they can hear it before we move on All right, folks. Sorry right. about that. We were having some issues. Why don't we, why don't we, uh, well, we can't really break out. I suppose you could go in and then break out immediately and relaunch so they can hear the wonderful dulcet sounds of yeah. the lead reel. Do you guys want to hear that voiceover? We can, uh, we'll jump in and then we'll jump back out and hear, can hear it. So, go ahead. We'll, uh, we'll go to back to the main menu here. We'll show you that. Jump into Mer back into flies and spiders. All right, here we go. We'll have it load. From a troubled sleep to find yourself alone in Mirkwood Forest. The last thing you remember is the sound of countless legs scuttling around your camp and hundreds of bulbous eyes peering from the dark. You realize that the giant spiders of Mirkwood have captured your friends in the night, and it's up to you to find them. So like I said, this is kind of one of the more interesting and unique narratives that you'll be seeing here in these first campaigns. So let's move into Mulligans. So I'm definitely going to keep Mithrander's advice um, as a fan of drawing cards in all its forms, but this one's especially powerful because of the one cost for two cards. The Athelian Lookout's probably a little too expensive at three resources. Round Shield is a pretty powerful card to be having here, so uh, I think we're going to try to keep that as well. We'll get rid of the Archer. Let's keep Self-Preservation, too, because I know you're a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan yeah. of that one. <laughs> All right, well, let's keep that, then. <laughs> Saves your butt. So uh, before we dive in, also, I just want to reiterate, this, this game is not meant to be a one-for-one -one simulation of the original tabletop game. Rather, we worked very closely with Fantasy Flight's original design team to create a new experience so some of the things are going to seem incredibly similar and familiar and some things are going to be different mm -hmm. uh, we're we're trying to make a unique experience for the digital game and not just take the, the tabletop and and recreate it one for one within the video game space but we've worked very hard to try to keep that tension try to keep the mechanics keep the tactics and strategy 
we've created new tactics and new strategies and new ways of handling some of the cards as well. So our attempt was not to just simplify things. The, the attempt was to create something uniquely different, but capturing all the best parts of the tabletop game. Yeah, well put. Um, for those who are asking in the chat, block is going to be the new, uh, kind of works like armor does within the tabletop game. If you have block, you'll absorb the first point of damage that you take when you take damage in a round. Um, so, like, like, unlike the tabletop game, damage is actually reciprocal here, so whenever you attack, your, um, your opponent will be dealing damage back to you as well. Um, so it can be important to keep that. Now you see here, this objective, um, we can only use one hero for the beginning phase of this, uh, of this location. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and keep Aragorn around, since he's got those multiple activations with his spe special ability. So we'll see if we can get the best from him. You see Saur on there just played what's called a tre uh, treachery card. Um, a treachery card is like a preparation, but just for Sauron, so until it triggers, it won't be affecting play at all, but we can see that the pip here, and it can show up that uh, he's got one of those ready to go once it once it triggers. Alrighty. So what should we do here? Oh, man. You know, that Guard of the Civil, he, he gives us Sentinel, which mm -hmm. is That's uh, true. very useful. However, uh, I mean, what are you looking to do? You're looking to preserve Aragorn? Well, here's the deal. I don't see any enemies on the board no. right now, so we really need to progress this objective as fast as we can. All right. So I think the best thing is going to be trying to find an ally that can help us do that. Sure. Since Aragorn's got this two, uh, this two willpower, he can contribute a lot to this four-power objective. But um, for now, we're going to have to, uh, we're gonna have to figure out a way to get through this as quick as possible. So I'm going to do Mithrander's advice. We're going to look at some more cards. For those asking, the stream will be archived, guys. Um, oh, great, we got an ally here who can help us out, the horseback Ooh, archer. So let's play him. He's got ranged, which means that if he attacks an enemy that's exhausted, he doesn't receive reciprocal damage. And he's got one willpower, so that should help a little bit with, uh, with completing this objective. And with that, we're out of resources for the turn, and we end the phase, and we go into the adventuring phase. This is another one of the um, simplifications from this to the... Uh, to the... Uh, um, digital game from the tabletop there's only two phases yeah. so if you play your card you're gonna have to play your cards during your preparation phase but during the uh, adventuring phase you'll be able to play certain cards but you'll also be able to activate your characters move forward do combat explore um, and I, I really think that that helps the game to uh, the pacing of the game basically sure yeah well really so so the progression of the game works there's an upkeep phase at the beginning of the round which isn't really an interactive because unless you have a power that affects during upkeep so you have that upkeep where you're going to get your resources you're going to use cards that activate during upkeep then you go into your planning phase during the planning phase you play the cards you wish to play you throw them out there onto the heroes that you already have or add new allies when you finish that phase then you go into the adventuring phase so really it's it's those three steps to any particular round of the game all right let's let's move forward now let's uh let's see if we can have aragorn no complete man. this objective Two left. The horseback archer can help a little bit here. And uh, with that, our adventuring phase is over. Swear to move on. Oh, Sauron's got some resources back. And he's going to start playing spider. some cards, yeah. Well, we're still waiting on to see what that treachery card is. I'm a little bit worried about that. Um, I yeah. hope it's nothing to do with his enemies here, because this, this guy's got despair on him now. So every time he attacks, it's going to increase our threat by one. You see, if we um, take the frame away for a second here, our threat's currently at 31. Um, that's our starting. But uh, at some point here in the future, it's going to be keep it's going to keep going up. And since this quest is like kind of a long one, uh, we're going to have to watch that as we move forward here. So uh, just to let people know, the uh, the bar on the right that is currently not active that is that's where the history is going to go. That's going to be right now. It's not active. We are still in development. So sometimes features are are turned on or turned off depending on where they're at in development. Uh, that is going to be the history. It's something that won't always be there. You'll be able to turn it on when you wish to look at the history of your turns and see what you did on previous turns or what Sauron did. Uh, right now it's automatically turned on. We can't turn it off, but in the final game, you'll be able to turn it on and off as you desire. Yep. Um, for those who are asking in the uh, chat, yeah, if we didn't play that ally, we could have activated Aragorn twice and moved forward with that objective. That's one of the decisions you're going to have to be making. Is it is it better in these early rounds to play cards and get ready, or is it better to just move forward as quick as you can? And I'm a big fan of using Aragorn more than once in a round. So, so am I. I try. <laughs> I usually try to save one in the back pocket there, but early in this quest, I find you you get a lot more successful if you uh, if you play out your allies as quick as you can. Um, so with that being said, let's play a guard of the citadel who can hopefully absorb an attack from this uh, spider. And protect that. Yeah, and that, protect uh, our archer here. Mm -hmm, that's important. 
Uh, and we've got some extra resources. Let's leave one in the pocket for Aragorn and put this blade on him instead. You see, when we play attachments on characters, there's three types of attachments. Weapons, special, and armor. Um, and you see, when you play one on them, this gem up here, so you can click that and then find out what you've played. Okay, looks like we're ready to go into the uh, into the adventuring phase, if you're okay with that. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, there it is. Oh, man. Okay. So that's a, that preparation card, that treachery card, rather, from Sauron means that uh, a character attacked by a spider can't attack this round. Um, so even if you can unexhaust them somehow, there's no way to get past them. Now, here's, here's where the uh, ranged really comes into play. Mm -hmm. So that spider's been exhausted. Mm -hmm. We now have a uh, horseback archer who can attack him due to points of damage yeah. and not take any damage in return. We're going to show you what or that or oh, we could ahead. use him on the we could use him on our objective. Sure. But eh, let's show him how the range works. We'll show him how range works since Aragorn can just complete the objective <sighs> himself anyway. Boom. So, so we just got the question um, is there a way to tell what the attachments are? Yes, there's a gem that's at the top of each of the cameos, uh, if you hover over that, it will show you what your current attachments are. And that works for both Sauron. Uh, go ahead and just show him how the one on Sauron. Let's see what Sauron's got on there again. He has Despair. And then Aragorn has a blade that gives him a plus one to hit. So you can always check that. All right, you ready to move forward? Yep. It's either let's that or do it. we can spend our one resource and play Advanced Warning for next round. Yeah, why don't we? Yeah, okay, let's do that. So this is our own prep. I'll let Luke explain it. Yeah, these preparation cards, guys, you play them in advanced and then they trigger upon something happening. So that one that I just played it is Advanced Warning. The preparation is that it exhausts the next enemy that Sauron plays. So it's not going to it's not going to exhaust anything in his starting row uh, when he starts up next round, but it will in fact uh, it will in fact exhaust the next thing that he plays from his hand. So we'll be able to take advantage of that once that happens. Kind of gives us a bit of a leg up. We're at 33 threat here, moving into the second location. Have succeeded in rescuing some of your companions, but a good eye for those who caught that we've renamed the Superpower. It's back down to just power. Um, <laughs> yes, that was a back and forth. <laughs> Valuable feedback. All right, let's move forward. This second location here. Let's look at our objective. If you resolve this, then you return each of the captured heroes to the owner's play area. So we still just got Aragorn in terms of heroes. Um, we're ready to move forward with uh, Gimli and Arwen if we can rescue them from this location. Advance warning just went off, exhausting the spider that Sauron played. But he played another one, a Hive Guardian, with counter one and sentinel. Counter means that if, it, if it's attacked, it's going to get that much value to its attack value. So yeah. this is going to be two when it's defending, but it's only one attack if it comes at us. So there are ways for us to take advantage of that, specifically with um, Sentinel, which we've got in play already. He is a tough opponent, but he only does one damage, so that's uh, at least a mitigating factor. Yeah, we can do something at least. Um, but we're going to have to take out both of these Sentinels before we move forward with the objective, because as we've talked about before, Sentinels block objectives. They block other enemies from being attacked as well. One other quick note, uh, just to remind everybody, we mentioned it earlier that we are in... Uh, basically alpha at this point uh, all of the VFX are like the shields you see here are things that are currently in flux so these are not the final graphics uh, necessarily we are making changes as we go so certain things like we've all gotten used to certain things and <laughs> we know they're going to change but I know you at home are watching and you may not know what stuff's going to change and what stuff isn't going to change. So I just want to make it clear that uh, not everything you're seeing here is 100% final. These are things we're continuing to work on. Okay. Hmm. So how do we want to progress in this round? Oh, boy, you got us into this mess. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, uh, again, we can always click up at the top here and look at our objective as well. Once we overcome rescue our friends, then we'll be able to unlock the travel. So we kind of know what we're going for here. <clears throat> but we got two sentinels in the way. So well, we got quite a bit of business to deal with here. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking Aragorn needs a shield. I think so too. What is a fighter without a shield? We'll give him block. Now he's got sword and shield. He's ready to go. So, oh, so yeah, now uh, bring up bring up Aragorn again. I want to mention something real quickly. So you'll notice on the actual field, it tells you what the current stats are for each of the characters, so you don't have to do the mental math for it. But if you bring up the original card, in this case Aragorn on the left, it'll show you the original stats. So you can always quickly glance and say, okay, he's plus one on this. We also denote it, obviously, with the color that there's been a change. But this helps you when somebody's been hurt or been uh, otherwise uh, affected. 
Uh, Tasty, I see you're asking if this game's going to have a tutorial. Yeah, actually, the tutorial's man, man, um, mandatory for completing to get the course set. Um, we have a pretty big, extensive tutorial, and that'll be ready to show you guys pretty soon here, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll be able to show that on stream quite soon. It's pretty much done, so we can do that on a future stream. Uh, everybody wants sneak attack, Luke. What do you think? Yeah, who doesn't want sneak <laughs> attack? I mean, obviously, it's definitely going to pull Gandalf, so why wouldn't we play it, right? All right. Actually, that's not no. as bad as I, I've I've gotten way worse pulls before. <laughs> I've gotten some zero attack folks here. Um, cards are going to be exhausted when their their frames are saturated. Um, you'll be able to see it's the the art kind of goes black and white. Uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit in the future because I think we're still approaching that with the art team and how we're going to represent we're that. We're close, but we're not a hundred percent done. The next time somebody exhausts, you can point it out how it currently looks. But that's something. It's not quite where we want it to be. So we're, oh, there you go. So that uh, hatchling. Yep. Up there, he's. You'll notice the art is now desaturated. Uh, we're also we're going to do a little bit more because some cards it's harder to tell than others. So it's something we're still working on a little bit. All right, let's go. Are we sure that the pull is random? Yes, it's random. <laughs> From sneak attack? Yes. <laughs> I know because I got a zero attack when I was testing <laughs> earlier today. There it is. We'll take out that sentinel there. With your alone. archer. With my archer. So no reciprocal damage. This guy's been doing work. I know there's not a lot of love for horseback <laughs> archer from a lot of the tabletop players, but this guy's been doing all right right now. See, I like to build a deck where my I archers are well no protected, man. and then they are very useful when you do that. Yeah, if you can put them behind a bunch of sentinel shields, you can do get a lot of work done with them. As long as you draw them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, we should talk a little bit about this stealthed up goblin sniper. is going to be annoying me for the rest of my life. Or should I say until the end of this quest? Um, so stealth is an interesting keyword where only uh, you can only attack it once there are no other valid targets in play. Um, this goblin sniper also has ranged appropriately enough. And upon the upkeep, he deals one damage to a random player character. So basically he sits up in the trees and just takes some pot shots while you're dealing with uh, clearing the objective and clearing out other enemies. Uh, which is wonderful and I love fighting him <laughs> so much um, and on only two resources for a 2-2 two -two, he's, he's, a, he's a pretty strong card but he's more an annoyance than anything else that all being said we can move on he loves you too man I know <laughs> it's real okay you see Sora on there just played Devoured in Shadow which Ooh. removed one of our uh, ta yeah that removed our Blade of Gondolin and he plays Watchful Eyes yeah, that's not good yeah I'm, I don't know about that Okay, well, you want to draw some cards? I kind of yeah, I'm always cards. thinking Gandalf. You, you know, when in doubt, go to Gandalf. <laughs> yeah, that's a good... <laughs> we'll go, go to Mithrander for some advice. How about that? Okay. There's the caregiver. This is the caregiver that I pulled with that sneak attack that I was talking about earlier. We've got a warden. I think we should probably save up our resources and see if we can play this warden later. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, he, like he, he's buff, and uh, he might be able to help us get towards this objective here. So let's, let's end the phase and uh, move on. For those who are asking stealth, uh, it cannot be targeted until all other valid targets are removed from play. Okay. Yeah, he's uh, he's dealing a lot of damage. We're exhausted here. Uh, we could spend the resource, activate Aragorn, um, but at three resources, it's not going to finish it. Yeah, and that Watchful Eye, unfortunately, is going to add to your threat. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. We're at 34 threat right now, guys, for those who are wondering. You know... I think I'm going to save it so that we can play the Warden next round yeah, and then use that. that extra activation. Yeah, Yeah, those are quest points, essentially, uh, penguins. Um, that's how much progress you need on the objective to clear it. So other than the main objectives to progress throughout the uh, location, Sauron can also play objectives that affect the board in like a static way. And if you quest towards those, um, then you eliminate whatever negative effect they have on the board. Wait, did I miss he put something on the uh, Goblin Sniper? What has he got on there? I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's got Vigilant now, so we're going to get two attacks from that. <laughs> um, yeah, Sauron's kind of a jerk. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> you know, I'm not a fan. That's the one thing I've definitely decided throughout this. He's a tough player. Yeah. All right. Now, this is normal, everybody. This is normal, <laughs> not hard. This is my Thursday. Um, <laughs> so we got the Warden in play. Let's, uh, let's end the phase and move towards the objective. Okay. He cannot stand alone! Yes, we are eliminated at 53. Okay, and uh, I'm going to spend my last resource to reactivate Aragorn here. He cannot stand alone. Complete the objective. Awesome. What's a fellowship of one person, right? Now we've got our All other right. characters in play. Um, we can either use them and, and clear this out. Let's so just travel, man. I, All right, let's get out of here. Those guys are exhausted, and uh, 
No, we're yeah. at 37 threat. You're totally correct. We're going to have to move <laughs> forward, I think. The last of your companions has been cut free, but the spiders are determined to recapture you. They spin giant webs from tree to tree, trapping you in their den. You will have to cut your way through them in order to escape. For those who are asking about the beta, we're handling it through early access. Um, and if you stick, stick around, we are going to be talking a little bit about um, the application to early access, some of the pricing that we're going to be doing, and some of the packages that will be available for that. Yeah, we're not actually going to be doing a closed beta. We're going to be doing the... We're going to jump right into early access. And we're, really, that is our beta. Yep, and that's going to be during quarter 1, 2018, as uh, Lozer says here. Yep. All right, let's jump in. This is one of my favorite boards in the game so far that they've designed. I love the uh, I love the look of the trees back there. Yeah, I don't know if everyone's noticed, but every time you go to a new location, and we're still in the same quest, by the way, we're still in Flies and Spiders, the second quest. Um, but every time you go to a new location, there's an entirely new board, and everyone has surprises. Uh, before we even go on, well, first you got to heal somebody. But I was going to say, yeah. why don't we go over our party real quick? Yeah, no, totally. Um, so this is Arwen's upkeep ability. She gets to heal one damage from a character. Um, every upkeep. So we're gonna heal up. Mm, well, we could heal the warden, but I think he's uh, he's looking a little worse for the wear. So he's a little hurt. Yeah, maybe we should just heal up Aragorn because he he he's somebody we can actually defend. I think this the warden's probably not going to stay around for much longer anyway, even if we do heal him. You know what I mean? Yeah. With this three let's attack on the board. So let's do that. Let's heal up Aragorn. Thick webs, the thickest of webs. So every this is another objective that kind of has a negative uh, effect on the board. Each ally that enters play is exhausted immediately. So as we play out new allies, we're not going to be able to use them until the next round because uh, unlike some other card games, um, you can use characters the second that they're played. Yep. Um, that, that works for Sauron too. Once it comes out, then it can immediately activate. So um, let's see what we can do here. So just to be clear again, early access will be quarter one of 2018. I think there was a one of the web pages listed it as December. That was not the yeah, case. Yeah, that was an inaccurate. Um, so it is going to be quarter one, 2018 for early access. Yeah, threat level is currently being blocked by an overlay. Sorry, folks. Uh, I'll show you up here at the top. We've got it right up there. Okay. You want to play another warden? Well, you only have one enemy out there. Um, yeah, let's give them. Let's give them two of those guys to worry about. Let's make an army. Now that we got our friends back, so let's. Yeah, so we got Gimli. Gimli's tough. We got Ar uh, Arwen. Yeah, let's go over the heroes in a little detail. So we, yeah. you guys have already seen what Aragorn can do in his power. Um, you can spend one resource to ready him up. That's limited once per round currently. Um, two attack, two willpower, eleven eleven uh, defense means that he's kind of one of the beefier, well-rounded heroes. Um, but with his threat value at eleven, he's there's a cost to taking him along. But I, I think he's a. Uh, He's one of my favorites for sure. Um, and then we've got Arwen, who's at threat 9, 1 attack, 2, uh, two willpower, 9 defense. Every upkeep, she heals 1 damage from a character, um, which I think is pretty powerful. Yeah, I honestly, I find I find her to be indispensable. Yeah. I, I, these are tough, tough quests, and uh, man, if you can get 1 point of healing in here, it means a whole lot. Yeah, especially on those longer quests. For 9 threat, she's, she's kind of a bargain. Um, and then we've got Gimli here. But Alalzer, I see you're asking about um, going for the side objectives. That's actually more how I play the game than anything else, <laughs> uh, which could be ill-advised in a lot of the cases. I tend to move straight for the main objective as fast as I can. Well, we also, in this case, the reason we didn't play the side objective on the last round is because that was Watchful Eyes, which increases your threat by one. So every round we're already going up by one. He doubles that. And we're already, where are we at, 38? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. That's two around. And rather than, we didn't have a lot of heroes there to really take it down, so we just said, screw it. We're moving ahead. We're moving to the next location. So it really depends on the circumstances. Sometimes those side locations are definitely worthwhile taking out. Mm -hmm. There are some, if you take them out, will be beneficial to you and your party. Uh, so it really depends on the circumstance and your style of play. Some people will just try to power through. Uh, we will also be scoring you on your play, so there's a scoring system that we'll go into in a later Twitch broadcast, but uh, at the end of the round, based on what you do and how you play, you'll get different scores. So uh, really, there's a combination of, are you going for score? Are you going for, I just need to get through this thing as quickly as possible? There's a lot of different ways you can play this game. It also means a lot with what spheres you're in. Like, Spirit has a lot of things that uh, help, lower your, help lower your threat. So yes, there are. A lot of the times when I'm playing a spirit deck, it's more about turtling and making sure I've got a clear board before I move forward. 
Um, but with a, with a deck like this that relies more on allies and attachments, I'm focusing most on combat as much as I can, which gets really problematic when I see some of the other objectives that do some nastier things that we haven't seen yet. Yep. Um, for those who are asking, also, uh, there are cards that can have Pursuit, and they will, uh, they will follow you from one board to the next in some cases. That's a keyword that we've attached in, uh, to some of the enemies. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple of quests particularly that uh, make high use of that. So, mm -hmm. and for are my control players in the uh, in the chat, I hear you completely. I am also one of you, and let me tell you, there is a, a very powerful lore spirit deck that can be played um, that I personally like a lot. So let's move on to the adventuring. Realm. Sure. So uh, we got the question: Is someone going to? Are we going to be able to see the artists? And will there be art credit? Yes, in the deck builder, you'll be able to look at each card and determine who the original artist was. They will be credited. Oh, Rivendell. Oh, we didn't go over Gimli. We should show him real quick. Oh yeah, I like Gimli. I like Gimli a lot too. He's at ten threat, two attack, one willpower, eleven defense. So his stats are, are pretty comparable to Aragorn's. But um, what, where he really shines is his stalwart ability. So the first time he takes damage within a round, first time he's attacked rather, um, he won't exhaust. Right. So that's huge, especially considering his second line, where um, after he takes damage, he gets plus two attack until the end of the round. So uh, he's a he's a big hitter. But the interesting thing about him is that I tend to like to activate him last. Uh, that way I can take full advantage of his plus attack, you know, let Sauron kind of attack him first. So there's a there's kind of a game of bait and switch um, with him, where you, you really want to move forward as fast as you can to uh, to attack with him. All right, all, all right, our so what's our, are what's our objective here? Let's go over that real quickly again. So we got to overcome escape the spiders here to unlock our travels. And that's at eight willpower, so we've got four more to get there. Two, four, six... So we're, if we save a resource from Aragorn, we can potentially clear it next round if nobody attacks him. Yep. So let's do that. We should probably take advantage of this time, though, and play um, and play an attachment on a character while we have the resources. Let's heal up Gimli. Uh, it's only when Gimli takes damage, so if he's got block and he only takes one point of damage, it's not going to happen. So remember earlier when I was talking about those annoying objectives that I definitely <laughs> have to clear? We happen to get one, a Cursed Forest. At the upkeep, discard the top three cards from oh, each player's deck. I hate that one. Yeah, me <laughs> too. So the biggest problem with this one is that, you know, you think, okay, well, I'm, I'm losing some cards, but it doesn't immediately affect the board. Maybe I can leave it in play. However, it seems to constantly get my Gimli every time on the first activate. I mean, my Gandalf on the first activation, um, and get it out of the deck. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Yeah, let's get <laughs> let's get that off the board. Um, let's play self preservation and let's put it on Gimli because he's been taking a lot of damage. Uh, all right. And there's the attack. So we won't be able to clear. Oh, well, it's only at four at this point, so we can still clear it. Let's, let's move. Do you want to do that, or do you want to clear um, this side objective here? Up to you, man. How do you want to play? Hmm. Let's so we have options. We could actually just power through, take that out, and move on to the next location, or we could take out the Accursed Forest and basically clear the board. Yeah, Lulzer, if you run out of cards, um, you are free to play with your heroes for as long as you can play, um, but after that, you know, you, you just run out of resources. There's no sorts of um, milling or fatiguing that'll make you lose the game immediately on being out of cards. Um, you can progress with your heroes since they're kind of the stars of the show. Um, the deck, you know, complements them, um, but you'll it will be very difficult. And usually at the point where you're running out of cards, Sauron's threat has gotten so high that um, the chances of winning look bleak. So let's let's clear this side objective, and then we'll be able to. Uh, with Arwen and the special activation from Aragorn, oh, we'll be able to still win. Yeah. That way we don't have to lose any of our cards. I serve no man. Boom. And let's travel forward. These forest flies, uh, they swarm, so every every uh, turn they add another one to the board. An enormous queen spider appears and blocks your path. Her many offspring gather behind you. There is no turning back. You must defeat the giant Sider. You ready to do this? Let's do it. All right, we got a boss, folks. Oh, we got we got observers on the side. Yeah, how about that? We got a little friends watching. 
All right, let's activate Arwen and heal up. Well, Gimli's going to get the self-preservation heal, so yep. let's let's throw it on Aragorn. For Rivendell indeed, McDog. For Rivendell indeed. Uh, we'll have to discard an ally. Oh, well. Yeah. Goodbye, Warden. I don't think we can make it since we're at 40 threat right now. It's just going to oh, keep man. on going forward. See, you should have built a deck with the uh, removal of uh, This is when threat. the spirit can really come in handy, right? Yeah, I need a folk, a uh, favorite card would be nice here, too. A favorite card would be nice here, but we'll let's, get into that later. Let's get the axe hand out for upon you. So this is a unique villain. This is what the bosses kind of look like. Spider Queen, 4 attack, 8 health. Um, that text box is going to have to be revised, but it's got unique, and each hatchling spider that gets played gets plus 1 attack and sentinel. These giant sp this giant spider has sentinel naturally, too, and it's uh, with a 2 attack and 8 defense. This is one of the hardest things to get through. Um, and since we've got demand, everybody, you know him, you love him, it's the hatchling spider. 1-3 uh, with, uh, with a sentinel here. And goblin spider, <laughs> sniper. Go goblin sniper. <laughs> Your favorite guy. You I can't. Up Every time they pull me out, <laughs> I keep pulling me back in. Um, but these hatchling spiders have sentinel thanks to the spider queen currently. So what's cool about this is you know Sauron is playing against you, so he actively is trying to screw you over, Luke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got zero resources, so we're ready to move into combat. And the spider immediately takes down the veteran axe hand. So goodbye to him. But she took a little damage, so that's good. Yeah, that's true. Ooh. What do you think here? Well, I, I'm, who, I'm not going to activate Gimli next because what I What do they have for their attachments so on Gimli and uh, Aragorn? Gimli's got, got self-preservation. Right. Aragorn's got a shield, so he's got block currently. Boy, I think you're going to need a little blocking. So maybe... Boy, so... All right, let's see. I'm so going to try to... Now? Maybe we should dogpile on the hatchling spider here. Sure. We'll have... Let's get rid of him. Game. Yeah. Stand alone. And then we'll see if. Okay. That was bad to happen. Oh, fortunately, he only took the one damage because of that mm -hmm. block. Uh, penguins, yeah, you can only have one type of each uh, attachment at a time on a character. Full but three total down. attachments. So. Yep. Aragorn did lose his blade uh, earlier. Yep. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Use it now. Sauron devoured it in shadows. There's that sniper. The sniper. Uh, All right, he's gone. Yep. All right. Well, and our Gimli has been buffed up, so he'll be able to attack the spider here. Okay, well, we can't get through this block. That's real rough. We didn't get... Well, we got some damage on the Spider Queen, right. but <clears throat> none from our attacks. That's too bad. All right, well, let's heal up Gimli some. Yeah, we're going to have to deal to... Hey, oh. but we got a Sentinel. Yeah, maybe our Guard of the Citadel can mitigate some of that damage. All right, let's let's put it on Gimli here. Five <laughs> so let's play all the Sentinels. Just all of them, and, of course, Watchful Eyes, which is going... <laughs> uh, we are currently at 41... 41 threat here folks as you can see up at the top there so that watchful eyes is going to be problematic the problem is I would normally move forward to this but I mean we can't take it out if we've got all these nope. sentinels in place Whew. well let's see what can we do well we've got the one two combo here yep. so guard of the citadel is a sentinel like we said one three for Final one identical. so he'll be able to block an attack which means we'll probably be able to get an activation from the galadhorn archer in so let's do that um we've got ranged Arrival, it deals one damage to an enemy, so we can ping something. I think maybe we want to try to deal one to the unique here. Um, eh, sure. Uh, yeah. You could also try to take out the giant spider. I mean, you'd take one damage on them, but oh, sure, yeah. depending on where they go after. Because if the giant spider attacks, attacks your sentinel, sentinel that will kill it. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I have a confession to make. Yes. Galadhorn Archer has by far my favorite Arrival text in the game. You breed so loud I could shoot you in the dark. I really like that. I don't know what it is, but uh, that's just awesome to me. Um, so let's deal one here and hope that he goes after the uh, Sentinel. We'll end the phase. Oh, well, he did, but with the wrong guy. Yeah, that's fine, though, <laughs> because now we can take it out with... Uh, oh, yeah, let's take I it out with Aragorn. No man. Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I was I not expecting that. that. Let's have Arwen oh, take out this... Down. Sure. Sentinel then. I really like to have her quest, but oof, I wasn't Ooh, expecting that either. Yeah. But now it's exhausted, My so our God archer can dies. get in one damage. Oh, you could have put it on the yep. Spider Queen too. Oh, that's true. But let's uh, let's have Gimli finish off all of the Sentinels here. We're probably going to see one in play here because uh, every turn, one hatchling spider for zero cost comes from the Spider Queen. Um, but we do have one resource, so let's. You want to get in some damage with 
Aragorn first before we progress. Well, he's going to drop to three, but I think that's okay if we can heal him up with uh, Arwen. Yeah, then he'll be at four. Well, then one attack from the Spider Queen will kill him, though. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Okay, well, let's do it. <laughs> uh, I mean, if we got to lose him, we got to lose him, right? Okay. okay, we're all exhausted. We're ready to move on. Ooh. Welzer, we can't shoot our own characters to activate their uh, their ability, but that's tricky, and I like that you're th you're thinking like a lore player, and I like that. Let's heal up Arwen. Oh, we were supposed to put that on Aragorn. I forgot. That's okay, yep. we'll keep him. We'll keep her alive. And then another Sentinel spider with the spiders and Mirkwood. You hmm. want to gain some strength? Well, yeah. Before anything else, let's get a free resource. Gaining strength is a really powerful card. It gives you a resource for zero cost. So essentially, you just trade your draw for an extra resource. So Aragorn still, well, he, we got a question on what his attachments are. He had two attachments earlier, so he had round shield mm -hmm. and a blade. He lost his blade. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely want to play this caregiver and try to yeah. heal up Aragorn. Definitely. How may I serve? And okay. then, I don't know, I'd probably put self-preservation on him so that he can heal up one at the end of the round. On Aragorn? Yeah, unless you want to put it on Arwen to keep her alive. I could see it on, on either of them. I feel like Arwen's valuable because we'll get her yeah. activation anyway. We can give her shield too, but... Mm, well, let's put self-preservation right. on for now. Maybe next round. Uh, block can stack. Um, you might see some cards that might give you extra block as well. So Sauron just screwed up because mm -hmm. we can now end this with our Galadon Orchard. If we can get through these Sentinels first. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's tanked up quite a bit here, so he is, not he quite. Is. And unfortunately, our, our caregiver here doesn't have any attacks. So can't zero attack. However, I was thinking earlier, we can still attack to exhaust an enemy to get in some range damage. Right. We're not going to be doing anything else with it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind in the future for sure. So yes, uh, Aragorn is grayed out as is the Queen Spider because they've both been exhausted. They've taken actions and mm -hmm. when they take actions they're grayed out so that you understand that they're exhausted. We're still working on that graphic. You know, the, we're at a weird moment of chicken here because I don't want to attack with Gimli until he's, he's buffed up and I don't want to attack with the Archer because it's got ranged. I would rather take advantage of the ranged once they gray out. So oh, I think Rivendell. we're just going to attack with Arwen. Down to two. Uh, I and, that, and there goes Arwen. The <sighs> yep. Okay. Um, we can either attack or we can just pass the round so that we'll have a ranged character for next round. I sure. Think that's probably what we want to do. We just want to pass. That hurts. That hurts because our threat went up by two again, and we're up to 45. Yeah, we have uh, we only have five more threat until we're, we're done here. Destroys a random attachment. There oh, goes. No. <laughs> there goes a shield. Uh, things are starting to look a little bit bleak. We'll play advanced warning here. You want to put the shield on somebody, or should we... Uh, well, let's see. Should we save Well, Aragorn lost his old one. Let's give him a new one. Yeah, we better. We don't get that... Uh, that heal. Yeah, you still, your resources are not tied to your heroes, so you'll still get three every you'll round. You'll always get three every yep. round. Yep. And you, they're universal resources, you don't have to use them per sphere. Yeah, we'll be talking a little bit about how we've changed the uh, the spheres I in a little bit no here, man. once we finish this quest. Let's take it out My with the archer. Flies. Move forward with Gimli. <laughs> if only that caregiver had an attack. Just give him a little he's got a little dagger on his belt. <laughs> Just throw that at them. Alright, well. We're getting another hatchling. It's looking bleak. We are at 49 threat. If we don't win this round, we lose. Oh, there's no way for us to make it. Uh, it was so close. I know. It looked so good for a moment. We, I really did think we were fine. <laughs> I'm, uh -huh. I'm actually kind of surprised that this ended up happening like this. Um, well, let's let let's just fight as valiantly as we can. We just fainted this enemy to reduce their attack to zero. That can only be played on a non-unique character, and that's a that's a one-cost event. One of the things we didn't really talk about is that you're not just playing cards during your preparations. Uh, certain events can still be played during combat and adventuring phases. Yep. So, you know, if you really want to get tricky, you can definitely do that. <laughs> So as we're about to lose here, we got the question, can you play a deck with less than three heroes? 
Um, that's something we went back and forth on. I, honestly, the difficulty and the way some of the, the narrative works in these, we just decided we're we're requiring three heroes. Did you just deck. see the, the look on my face when I realized that we can win? No. Can, we can win. <laughs> I think so. With the second activation, we're going to lose Aragorn, but Gimli's going to make it if if there's no attack on him. Oh, you're lucky that... Uh, yeah, the flies didn't go after him. I think we're going to make it. We did Last it. second victory. Squeaked <laughs> out. Good job, sir. Wow. Good job. <laughs> um, this, this reward, by the way, is not final, and neither is the right. text, but um, I was not expecting us to win that game by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, you no. cannot, man, you cannot write us a dramatic ending like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, that saves me the embarrassment of losing the second game on stream, <laughs> which is what I thought was going to happen. Um, for that those of awesome. you shouting misplay, you're going to get very tired very quickly if you keep watching me <laughs> pointing out every <laughs> single one of those. We're going to see a lot of that, though. All right. Well, that was that. So there were some details that we wanted to go yeah. over a little bit, Tim, while we were here. And then while we've got Tim on the stream, if we wanted to do a little bit of a Q&A uh, with the head of the studio, not necessarily just about the game, but also we can talk a little bit about Fantasy Flight Interactive, too, if you'd like. Sure. Um, so, yeah. hey, while you're doing that, why don't we just go into a quest screen, just pick one at random, we'll have that as our backdrop, just so they can at least take a look at the game a little further. Yeah, sure. Sauron... Uh, we got lucky as well. Yeah. <laughs> we got really lucky. Yeah. Sauron screwed up. He choked. He choked. Do you want me to jump in here? Yeah, or? just grab, grab any of them okay. uh, right now. Let's just, yeah. Show them a board. Yeah, show them a board. Yeah. You know, we'll show them the first one. Since some of the people weren't here on Tuesday, we'll you, give them a sneak peek. Yeah, board. if you miss that first quest, we'll give you a, a look at what that board looks like. The King of Dale has entrusted you with an urgent letter. For so King you can skip Bayorne this if you don't wish to Chieftain hear the, of the yeah, once soft, well soft the strains of Galadriel telling you the narrative that's house, building up. You can skip you right into the game. Through the yeah. This is our opening. Yeah. I'm going to do so a yeah, just, uh, We'll just sit on the screen. We don't have to really do anything. It is important for me to mulligan correctly. <laughs> okay. So, this good. is a moral standing. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, let's talk about a few things. Uh... Yes, the flies attacked, I believe, was it Gimli? No, they attacked the caregiver instead of ah. exhausting. Um, but we, we had one resource, so we would have we would have still gotten in the attack for yep. Aragorn because of his power action. Which well, we no, had but he only had one hit point left. Oh, I see what you're saying. Well, but he had, he didn't I have use shield hit on? point. That's not actually the term. I yeah. can hear Charlie cringing <laughs> from, from 100 feet away. It's actually health. But. We we put that second shield on him, though, I thought. So I think he would have survived. Oh, you're right. He, he would have, have he would have blocked survived. That. We still would have blocked that, yeah. We so, still would have won, yeah. Well, in that case. Um, C Stan, I see you're asking who the starter spirit hero is. We're not revealing him on stream. We'll reveal him tomorrow, but it's Frodo. We've talked about that a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll show him. And he, he's got a really cool ability. Yeah. I really like him. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll give you. I mean, we got more of these coming. So there's a lot. Well, there's a lot to go over, and you're just seeing a very tiny portion of what's going on. Uh, we're using starter cards. Everything in here thus far is what's in the. Uh, the core, the set. core set so you know everything you're seeing here we're not showing any of the expansion stuff we're not showing anything beyond the core set so this is all stuff you get to see mm -hmm. uh, now in terms of one of the things I want to talk about that we talked about on Tuesday that I, I think people have questions over is uh, favorite cards yeah let's talk a little so let's bit talk about, about that cards. a little bit so so what are favorite cards so essentially a favorite card is kind of a it's it's a consumable it's a card that you can use you only get one of them that you can take into a deck on a quest. So you get your three heroes, your deck of 30 cards, and if after your mulligan step, the game will allow you to pick a favorite card. We'll show that on a future broadcast to give you a little more in-depth. But it's sort of a clutch card that you can hold in reserve, and it's a zero-cost card. You can play it at any time to basically save your bacon if you need the help. Uh, depending on the type of card, there's different types of cards. So it could be get a card, it could be reduce threat, it could be heal one character a couple of points. I mean, they are limited. They don't they don't just let you win the game, but they are clutch cards if you're really in a tight spot. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to make the game as accessible as possible for people who aren't necessarily used to. This is this can be a hard game. All of you folks who play the tabletop game know that the this game is legendarily difficult. And a favorite card isn't necessarily going to win you that game, but it might save you at a special clutch point from losing the game entirely. And here's the thing. We're going to give you some of these for free. 
Uh, you don't have to take them. You can ignore them completely. The game does not require you to bring favor cards. You can just say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to play pure. I'm not going to play with them. Uh, there's no reason to necessarily have to take them. They're there for if you want them. And I, I found them to be a lot of fun, but they are things that we're going to sell in packs. It is a consumable. You use it and it's gone. Uh, it's Think of it like a potion that you get a potion, you use it, you're done. Uh, but they're not we're going to keep we're trying to keep the cost very inexpensive and like everything in this game you can buy them with your valor points which is our main currency or you can buy them with real world money or you can get them uh, as bonuses and rewards from the palantir yeah so trench i see you're asking if they can be earned they're not given to you directly but you'll be able to use your valor points to purchase them yes yeah, so indirectly they can be so yes the answer is yeah and for those who are likening them to boons that is a uh, that is a very, very good choice. Um, for a long time internally, actually, we were considering them like boons, basically, that you'll see in yeah. a lot of the sagas. Um, basically, the question was, how can we retain what makes this game so special in terms of its difficulty while making it, you know, easy enough to be accessible? Right. And, and one of the solutions there was these one-time things. And they're not terribly powerful no. effects. Like, can I, I mean, one of them is... Um, Basically, Mithrandr's advice, but for free. You draw two cards, but for zero cost. So they're they're just little ticks that allow you yeah. to uh, get through these campaigns a little bit easier if you're having difficulty. Well, and again, you can only bring one on a quest. So that entire quest we played just now, you got one. You got to pick the moment you're going to use it. You can screw it up and use it at the wrong point. You don't have to use it at all. At the end, if you don't use it, you just you get the card back. It goes right back into your your pile it's not expended because you didn't actually use it uh it is a consumable and you choose when you want to use it and you choose if you want to use it mm -hmm. so uh because we don't want to dumb down the the difficulty we want to keep the game hard to play on a on a, on a macro level we want to keep it challenging so but at the same time we want it to be accessible and so the Nothing worse than brutally smacking down a noob uh, with with a with a single and co-op game. So we wanted to make sure that somebody has that little bit of help if they want it. Yeah, I know a lot of people are kind of scared of the term streamlining when we talk about this game because that they think that's going to take away from some of the complexity or difficulty that comes around with that. It's really important to us that we maintain that. Like the yeah. spirit of this game is that it's the spirit of this game is Lord of the Rings to me yes. because it's about a team banding together and facing impossible odds and coming out on top. Um, that's not just a narrative drive, you know, like that's not just that that means something to us and we want to make sure that it's there. Um, and we want to make sure that it's not like abusable either, that these favorite right. cards aren't abusable. Yeah, I mean, we're, we, we thought about everything really carefully so that there's no there's no pay to win. There's no abusing of either players or, you know, our fans. We don't want you. There's no point in us making something. And you're going to be like, I hate those guys for making that. Yeah. And <laughs> or at least we hope so. <laughs> we hope so. And, I mean, we're not going to make everybody out there happy. Some people are going to come from the tabletop game and they're going to say, you know, I hate this or I hate that. But at the end of the day, we are thinking very carefully about every system we put in. We're trying to be true to the spirit of it. Yeah. We have Caleb as a uh, lore master and spirit guide for our team who's constantly in the background saying, but it's got to do this <laughs> or it can't do that. And, you know, we're taking everything very, very seriously because we're the stewards of this game on the digital front. And we want to make sure that it feels compelling and fun. And when we talk about streamlining, we're not talking about dumbing down. We're talking about making it playable on the computer. So making it play in a way that you, it's not fiddly, it's not overly complicated, that you can play quickly if you want. you got 10 minutes, you can dive into a quest and have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I wanted to note on, I know we have a lot of international fans, um, uh, people you know in Europe, everywhere. Um, and so we, we are going to be, for launch, we will be translating the game into English, French, Italian, German, and Spanish. So that's going to be full e-figs for... Um, all the cards you'll be able to read all the in-game text for that the voiceovers aren't going to be translated but the cards themselves will be um and then after that are we looking at other languages yes too? so beyond that we are also looking to add uh, portuguese and simplified chinese so that we can widen our pool of markets and based on uh 
player feedback when we're in early access. Of course, we'll look at other languages as well. Mm -hmm. But those are, those are the initial ones that we want to get out. So it'll be eFigs at early access. And as soon as we can add them, simplified Chinese and Portuguese. Yeah, totally. We, we understand the demand for all of those, and we want to make sure that this game is accessible to a wide audience as we can make it. So uh, we're working within limitations, but we're definitely trying to help. Um, so we talked a little bit about the heroes already. I kind of want to go into the sphere system a little bit because I think that's an interesting change sure. from this to the tabletop. So people in the tabletop know that you kind of have your individual pool of resources from your heroes and you have to use those to play cards. Um, what we found is that that leads to a lot of in interesting, uh, interesting corner cases and niche things. But um, what we really wanted to make sure that wouldn't happen was, uh, you know, those kinds of situations where you have something in your hand and it's kind of rotting without you being able to play it. So we wanted to integrate deck building really deeply within the gameplay, and that's why kind of the spheres matter when you're building your deck more than within the game itself. So if you take a hero who's leadership, then obviously you'll be able to play leadership cards, but each of these cards also have a level for the heroes to them as well. So. There are going to be cards outside the core set that are, say, level two hero, which means you have to have two heroes from the uh, from the leadership sphere or from the tactic sphere, whatever that card is, um, in order to play it effectively. Uh, the other thing is that that'll be that'll kind of be an incentive to play like mono leadership decks, mono tactics decks, things like that. Um, we wanted to in integrate that into deck building rather than the actual play of the game. Um, and in doing that, I think one of the things we really looked at was look. Each of these spheres has an identity, but we need to make sure that's better defined um, so that people can really think about these uh, these spheres and what they represent, uh, not only thematically, but mechanically, I would say. Yeah. 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 So tactics is all about fighting. Leadership is all about strength and numbers. Lore is all about uh, learning through knowledge, and we've kind of represented that by showing, uh, you know, it's kind of more controlling. It's about drawing cards, healing, protecting, and that's kind of where this Lore Arwen came from. I know a lot of people were talking about Lore Arwen. Um, and then there's also spirit, which is all about tenacity. It's all about pluck. It's all about being able to move forward. And it plays a lot with willpower. It plays a lot with objectives. And it plays a lot with threat. So it's kind of the things that are tangentially related to combat, which I think is super interesting. And that's why I'm, I'm personally drawn to that sphere a lot. Sure. Yeah. So uh, one of the things with, uh, I see the question, uh, how long till we can do Monosphere and when will that be a possibility? During early access, there will be enough heroes for you to have uh, two heroes from the same sphere. Uh, that's because of the number of heroes that will be available during early access when we go full release, which won't be that long after early access. Uh, we will have enough that you'll be able to do Monosphere. That should not be a problem for those of you who want to Monosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, there will be some neutral cards. Uh, we are going to be adding them. Obviously, Gandalf is the neutral ally that you'll find in the core set, but there's going to be a couple of them as well, uh, certain staple effects. We kind of wanted to move away from staple cards, so things that you have to include in every deck. Um, as in a design space, we just want to make sure that a lot of strategies are facilitated and there's not really any kind of, like, hosers or anything like that yeah. that we need. But, you know, sometimes that'll happen. Quarter 1 2018 is our date for early access currently. We'll be able to, once we approach that a little bit closer, we'll be able to go in more detail about that. And uh, when will co-op be added? Uh, I noticed some people in some articles were talking about it being only single player. It is not only single player. We will be adding co-op uh, not too terribly far along. So it'll definitely be up at full release maybe sooner. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Yeah. But uh, we, we don't want you to wait too long. We want to just nail, make sure that, you know, in single player we nail down everything to the point where we're very happy. Then start working on getting fans immersed into the multiplayer. Yeah, totally. Um, are there any other big questions that you guys have right now? Anything you'd like to see? Obviously, we can't show you the deck builder yet or uh, other decks right now. Well, we could, but we want to save some things for later. We do want to <laughs> save some things for teasing. Uh, we're going to be doing, drilling out some... Uh, some extra content for you planned for all the hero packs so that you can take a look at those new heroes and the cards that will be contained within. So that's uh, that'll be pretty exciting. Well, and there's a lot of topics we want to go over in other broadcasts. I mean, we'll be talking about the design and art layout in a future talk uh, so people understand how we put things together and why we made some of the choices we did. Uh, we'll be doing talks about music and sound, and we'll be having some special guest stars. 
uh, to help go over a lot of this. There's there's a ton to this game, there really is. So we don't want to just we don't want to do an eight hour long. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, as much as I'd <laughs> like to do that, this is. Um, but tales, I see you're asking about um, if you're going to be able to look at Sauron's cards uh, as you encounter them. There's a bestiary that's included for each yeah. quest, so you'll be able to take a look and see what he's already played and what you've encountered from him. But only what he's played. Yeah. Only things that you've seen already, you'll be able to see within that quest. So. Um, it's going to take a couple of playthroughs before you can really master it, but after you do, then you can build decks and you'll be basically toying with him at that point. Um, we're getting the question on Nightmare Quest mode. I've seen that a couple of times. Yeah. Uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say yes, but I'm not going to say no. That'll be something we'll talk about at a future time. But uh, it, uh, the thing is, I mean, one of the things we have as a challenge for this game is when it first came out on the tabletop, it was the core set. And in a lot of ways, we're kind of starting the same place. We're starting with the core set. Now we're adding additional expansions right out of the gate, which we'll go into in a future discussion. But there's several years worth of content. Uh, we're not gonna mirror it one for one. That was another question that came up. The other thing is, uh, since this is a different experience, our goal isn't to, I mean, we, we kind of made the core set very similar to the original core set, so people will recognize that. But moving forward, uh, we will, be creating unique quests. There's a lot of things we can do digitally that couldn't be done on the tabletop without extreme amounts of bookkeeping. Uh, so we're gonna play with it a bit. We're gonna do some fun stuff. Uh, we will definitely be adding additional features down the road. This is all things we wanna do. It's all dependent on the success of the initial game, but we have years of stuff planned for this game that we want to uh, bring to you guys. We're super excited about it. Uh, we, we can't wait to start doing some of that. But yeah, totally. We, the thing is, is as a studio, uh, we have limited time, limited resources, and limited people. So we have to be very careful and pick the things we can do and bite off what we can actually chew. So we've been very careful about, okay, what is the content we're coming out? And we have a, a, a plan on what that stuff is going to be and how we're going to roll it out. And we want to just keep putting stuff out there. And it's stuff that we're going to have stuff we're going to give away. There's going to be stuff that you can buy. There's going to be, I mean, there's there's so much cool stuff. I would love to just spill it all. But I know. Uh, that stuff we'll get to. So a couple questions that I saw. People were asking about traits and if they will be affected by gameplay. Uh, yeah, all heroes. You can see uh, some of the heroes here have their own traits. <coughs> They're on the bottom kind of faintly a little bit, but, you know, Aragorn's got his... Yeah, we're, we're playing with the font on that. Gimli's a dwarf. Look, so it's a little clearer. And it matters for Sauron's cards, too. You see orcs um, versus spiders versus other types, too. So traits matter. People who are asking about um, extremely rare cards in the encounter deck, that are there are some uniques that are not necessarily scenario-dependent that will show up. Um, same with some other more powerful cards. So Well, and since we have levels of cards, yeah. there's going to be some stuff that can only be unlocked if you have multiple members of the same sphere. Yeah, totally. Um, the other thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about was, uh, I don't know if you're prepared to talk about this yet, but what about people streaming the game once the game goes in early access? Sure, yeah, I see somebody, there's a question there from Tasty. Um, there will not, I mean, I don't think you can, I don't think you're allowed to make a limitation during early access. I don't <laughs> think Steam allows you to require an NDA during early access time period. So, uh, you know, we, we, don't have necessarily a restriction for you to talk about or share stuff. Uh, now, as a company, uh, we're you know we're talking about how we want to proceed with interacting with people who want to stream material and that sort of thing. But uh, right now, I mean, the game comes out in early access. It's your game, so we, there won't be an NDA or any requirements like that. Yeah, and you know, as you as you start playing the game and start seeing you know some unique things happening to you, um, some you know it's tales of bad beats, things like that. Please share them with me, because um, as the community manager, that's one of my favorite things to read and find <laughs> out. Definitely from uh, people playing the game, how oh. they you know how it affects them and how they do it. I'm sure you're gonna get emails of like how you should have played that entire scenario. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'm gonna get plenty of that. That's fine. The more time I can spend reading about this game on work hours, the better for me. So please. <laughs> Uh, do some of that. Um, yeah. So do we want to talk about uh, early access and uh, what we want to... I kind of want to go over some of the packages. Yeah, yeah I think All it's right. time to do so, that. Uh, so I think, you know, uh, I, I think we want to reveal a few things, uh, especially to the Twitch audience that we haven't talked about yet. 
when we release into early access, uh, I know there's been questions over what's the pricing structure and that sort of thing. We'll, we're not going to give all the detail right now, but I want to give you guys a heads up. So when we come out into early access, uh, there will be three different founders packages we're putting together for the early access period. Uh, there's there's going to be a, a lower level version that's $9.99 and a mid-level version that is uh, $19.99 and a high-level version that is $39.99. Uh, each one of them is themed around something and each one has custom uh, unique cosmetic stuff that is part of it. So we'll get into all that stuff later on. There's going to be player tags and avatars, uh, unique card backs. All that stuff will go into detail in, in, f in future Twitch broadcasts, but those are those will be the three different sort of pricing structures and you can, you'll get Valor points and Palantir views and extra stuff that you'll be able to apply to the game. Um, we'll go into very much detail on what that stuff's going to be. Sorry, I said, uh, did I say forty nine ninety nine? I meant thirty nine ninety nine. Thirty nine ninety nine. Yes, yes. Sorry. If you want to give us forty nine ninety nine, <laughs> if you want to give ten dollars so. extra, you know, Luke, Luke likes lunch. The so. bonus all goes to me, so <laughs> that's more pizza for me. To and eat. the game prices will be regional. Uh, that's something we will, uh, you know, we'll talk about down the road. But those are all the you know U.S. prices. And obviously, we're not going into super detail on what they are yet. I can't wait to show you, but this is stuff we all have to get. We, we have to make sure it's all cleared with our uh, licensing partner, and we want to make sure that everything's uh, solid before we go out and share it all. But before we move forward, just so you guys know, um, all kinds of exclusives that come from that are cosmetic. So the yes. things that you are getting in these packages are levels and tiers of in-game currency and other in-game goods that you can redeem um, for more cards, things like that. Um, but, but there will not be cards that are unique to each tier. You won't get, you won't. It won't be like, oh, that guy got, um, you know, special spicy Aragorn. Yeah, and nothing like that. There's no pay to win. We're not. That that's super super important to us that you know that. The other thing is that um, while we might have promotional things within the tabletop where it's like, uh, you know, an exclusive art or an exclusive card back that comes to fans who have been playing the tabletop for years. Um, it's never going to go the other way around where only digital players are getting access to physical cards. I don't even know how we would do that logistically, but I want to make sure that you guys know <laughs> that's not going to happen. Yeah. Sure. And in a future Twitch, we'll talk about all the cosmetic stuff. I mean, there will be card bags. There will be, like I said, avatars, alt art, stuff we're looking at. All, all these things are things we're looking at. But, I mean, at the core, our, our, our key element is no pay to win. Uh, make sure that, you know, there isn't just... I can only get that card by getting that pack, that sort of thing. It's it's mainly cosmetic stuff. It is stuff that you wanna you wanna apply to you, and then in-game currency and that sort of thing. Once we go uh, to full release, the game will be free to play, and all players, regardless of what uh, pack they buy, will all get the same core pack. Mm -hmm. It's just you'll get extra currency that you can spend if you buy the other packs plus the cosmetic stuff that's unique to them. Also, anything that's in the early access that is cosmetically unique will be only unique to those people who take part in early access. So, uh, the stuff when we do show it, because it's pretty cool, uh, I love the art, uh, You, that's stuff you can only get during early access in terms of the cosmetics. Yeah. So, we really want to reward players who are jumping on early and helping us to make this game into a uh Something viable that can continue way out past uh, past full release, you know, as a, a, in a steady content schedule. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else you want to go over? I think I think we've gone over a lot. Yeah, so. we kind of <laughs> dumped a lot of we information. Dumped a lot of information. I'm, I'm not quotes. sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully that's enough for you guys today, and uh, hopefully that's not too much of an information overload as we as we continue on. So, Viv, just to answer a couple of your questions real quick, because I'm. Uh, Stuff scrolling by quickly here. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, just to answer some of your questions there, uh, we'll go into later how much stuff you get and how much value you get. You definitely will get uh, Valor points and that sort of thing. Uh, in terms of, I think we went over in the last Twitch broadcast, but in terms of the core content, what you get, you get the four heroes. So the core pack is you get Aragorn, Gimli, Arwen, and Frodo. You'll get 21 unique cards and you'll get two of those so you essentially have uh, 42 unique cards you'll get favor cards what am i forgetting you'll get a couple of options for card backs regardless i mean we'll go into more of this in detail but if you don't spend a dime you're going to get essentially a core set 
you're going to get lots of play and hours of play. Yeah, but that's not even considering which, how you spend your Valor points after exactly. that, Exactly, and once yeah. you start spending your Valor points, and we're going to put all kinds of new quests, adventures, campaigns, uh, we'll go into detail on how all that works, because we do, we do have a plan for all of that. And believe it or uh, not. And we're pretty excited about it, but now is not the time to go into detail for yeah. it. Yeah, and uh, I also saw you were asking about arrival effects um, entering from things like sneak attack. Yes, they always trigger. So if, if I play, if I get um, a caregiver off of my uh, sneak attack, then I'm going to be able to heal two from a character. Yeah, unless, well, unless you don't have anybody hurt. In which yeah, case, in which case I, I got a wonderful 0-2 <laughs> with one willpower, um, which was what happened to me. Uh, okay, I think that that's enough for today then, Tim. Thank you yeah. so much for joining us. Absolutely, and thanks everybody for tuning in. And yeah, absolutely. We're going to have a lot more of these yeah. in the future. I will see you guys on Tuesday where I'm going to try to show you a little bit more of Quest 1. Um, and we're also going to have a couple of giveaways on Tuesday, Tim. Sounds good. I'm going to be giving some stuff away to people in the chat and some people on social media, so make sure you tune in. Um, what else is going on? Oh, you know what? We have currently, as I haven't checked it since we started, but we have 1,997 likes on Facebook. I would really like that number to go up to 2,000. So if you'd like to head over to Facebook <laughs> and uh, uh, FFI Games is uh, facebook.com slash FFI Games. You can follow us along if you like us. You know, that'd be great. Uh, we can also, on Twitter, we can interact with me at FFI underscore games. Uh, that's going to be us on twitter.com. Those are our social tags, so find us on there. I'm also constantly watching the Steam page. You know, you can always get in contact with us through that. So make sure you, you come over there, um, get in contact with us. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, and definitely go check out our Steam page. We will be posting items in the community page. Yeah, and, totally. Uh, don't forget to wish list this if you're interested in the game. Yeah, that's the best way to keep up with information. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. Thank you so much, um, and we will see you on Tuesday. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>